I would like to welcome you to our uh, confirmation first Holy Communion. There's a couple announcements I'd like to make before Mass. First, we have, uh, we have somebody who is going to take pictures for us. And in order for her to get a good picture of everyone's child, uh, we ask that you don't come up and take your own pictures. I'm going to email you the pictures. Uh, so then you'll have one. And after Mass is done, we're going to have a class pictures. Um, we're going to have the students come up by class. So when I call their class, they will come up and we will uh, snap a picture with them with their teachers and um, Bishop Warfield, Father Steve, and Deacon Tim. The other uh, announcement I would like to um, clarify about first uh, when they receive their first Holy Communion. We're going to have the students all receive their first Holy Communion first, and then when they, the last one receives, then we will have the congregation receive. And our teachers, again, will usher you, but uh, there will be a Eucharistic minister at the back of the church as well as the front, and the, we'll start from both ends. The, uh, and like, again, I will say the, um, the teachers will usher you, but... Uh, the ones that are sitting on the sides will come right through the pews to receive in the middle, okay? Um, again, welcome. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is. And your children have worked hard. And I can tell that their hearts are open to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit today, as well as receive Jesus in Eucharist. It's been such a pleasure working with them. So we will begin with our opening song. Table of Plenty. Thank you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. It's a joy to be with you for the celebration of the completion of the sacraments of these 34 young parishioners here through confirmation of First Communion. One of the other joys is to see a church full of people. You know, and it's hopefully a sign of returning to some level of normalcy. But no matter what the case, we continue to be able to celebrate our faith in the presence of the risen Christ in all of our lives. As we begin this celebration, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you give us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us up to, unto new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
The church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydia. There he found a man named Aeneas who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated is Dorcas. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she felt sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, he took them to the room upstairs, where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when she had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? Since Jesus know, knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? If, what, if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before, it is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe, the ones who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples turned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Students, as I call your name, if you would stand and stay, remain standing. Ryan Marill, Ali Sturgar. Stand out into the aisle too. Sorry. Okay, Amelia Reinhardt, Bailey Ryan, Bryce Warren. Trace Chase, Jude Verlick, Reno Rafato, Kaylee Massey, Luke Glennon, Annabelle Fornchell, Ava Hammond, Sophia Kelly, Paige Hofferber, Hudson. Hedges, Natalie Lannon, Cooper Liberty, Anne Haney, Natalie Humphrey, Avalyn Moffat, 
Shirsha Moffat, Liam Hagem, Ava McDonald, Malik Barreto, Anna Parker, Aaron Wolfblack, Clara Piccioni, William Hastings, Camilla Stubbs, Milton Stubbs, Santiago Rodriguez, Maxwell Watch, Caleb Weller, and Jake Weller, Bishop Warfell. The candidates of St. Thomas the Apostle have been properly prepared to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation on behalf of Father Steve and the faith community of St. Thomas the Apostle. I ask that you confer upon them the seal of the Holy Spirit and welcome them to the table of the Eucharist. Don't they look like angels? Don't we know better? <laughs> Actually, I say that a lot because uh, God didn't create anybody here to be an angel. God created us all to be saints. You know, and that's uh, what this life that we have is to, to learn how to respond to the power and the presence of the Spirit of the risen Lord in our life to be holy and saintly. Uh, I have an example of a young person you may not have heard of Carlo Acutis. He was beatified October 12th, 2020. The beatification is the next step to the process of canonization. Oh, by the way, you candidates, you may sit back down. <laughs> the canonization of the, of the beatification is a process in the full canonization of a person who is to be eventually declared a saint. The process begins by crediting uh, the person with, with two miracles through their intercessory prayer. So, you know, in the case of Carlos, um, there was a family in Brazil who had a boy with a very rare disease that was killing him. And they sought intercessory prayer. They asked Carlos to, to pray for them and the boy, and he was completely healed. So that was the first miracle. And after it was verified, he was able to be beatified, the, the next to last step on canonization. You know, what makes Carlos' case so notable was his age. He died of leukemia at the age of 15. Now, beatification usually takes years and is normally of someone much older. There are exceptions, such as St. Therese of Lisieux, who died of tuberculosis at the age of 23, but normally it is a much longer process than someone who has lived a long life. Why God reveals someone definitively is in heaven is a mystery to us. We may wonder why it takes so long or why some are recognized while others are not. It is important to remember that it is really not the church who makes saints. It is God who reveals to the church who is in heaven. And as I said, it's the divine mystery. We don't fully understand it. The purpose, however, is for, someone, is for the someone being declared is not for that saintly person's benefit. They're obviously in heaven. They don't need anything. They've got their, their home. It's for us who remain. And in the case of Carlos, I believe God wanted to teach us that sainthood does not depend on age. You hear that, candidates? Sainthood does not depend on age. All of us are called to be saints. And the Eucharist is an essential element in this process. A little more information on Carlo will explain why I bring him up at a mask for completing the sacraments of initiation, confirmation, and the Eucharist. Carlo was a young Italian boy who grew up in Milan, Italy, but spent a good deal of time in Assisi. His cause for canonization was initiated only six years before his beatification a process that usually takes much, much longer, sometimes centuries. 
Carla was a boy filled with joy who was involved in sports and music and evidently had quite a mischievous streak in him. So he's just like all of you kids. He was normal. He wasn't like a, the picture of a plastic holy card. He was quite normal. He did have a particular focus on the Eucharist and really at an early age said he wanted to become a saint. Even at four years old, as his family would pass by a Catholic church in Italy, he urged them to stop so he could go in the church and blow kisses to Jesus in the Eucharist reserved in the tabernacle. He pleaded to receive his first Holy Communion earlier than the usual age of eight, which was in his own diocese. And based on his spiritual maturity, the priest allowed him to receive his first Holy Communion much earlier. From then on, he wanted to receive Holy Communion every day and made the attempt to do that for his short life. Carlos exhibited a great devotion to the Eucharist, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and to all the saints, and demonstrated frequent acts of charity. His family was astounded at his funeral with all the unknown persons who attended and had been touched to him in some way. Carlos was a techie, and he used his computer skills well. He designed, and designed, he designed a website in order to document all the verified Eucharistic miracles known to have occurred throughout history. And panels from off the site have been displayed in locations around the world. All this for someone who died at 15 years old. Carlo kept the diary and is quoted from it often. One quote, the more Eucharist we receive, the more we will become like Jesus, so that on earth we will have a foretaste in heaven. Carlo is a wonderful example for young people making their first Holy Communion after they have been anointed with the sacred chrism. These sacraments are given to us to help us grow spiritually in our Christian life. They are given to us by the Lord to help us to become saints like Carlo. So for example, if we lay out in the sun, we're gonna get a suntan, aren't we? Thank you. I was waiting for the nod of the head to agree. Well, when we are before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, especially if for a prolonged time, such as adoration, we become holy. Today, you who are candidates for full initiation, for confirmation and first Holy Communion, are, to, are invited to share fully in the life of the church. Your reception of confirmation is a completion to your baptism and celebrates the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit of the risen Lord in your life. It is not so much you confirming your faith, but God confirming his love and presence in you. The Holy Spirit of Jesus is always present and available to us, but we have to be open to receiving the Holy Spirit. When we do open ourselves to the Spirit, like Carlos, the Spirit becomes alive in our lives. And the more open we are to the Spirit, the holier and more saintly we become. So you candidates for First Communion, confirmation, your job is to be open to how God is working in your life. Whereas baptism and confirmation are received but once in life and marks you as a member of the church, the Eucharist fully invites us into the life of the church, into the life of Christ. Each time we come to Mass and receive Holy Communion, we are renewing our life in the Lord and our commitment to live as the Lord's disciple. Each time we receive Holy Communion, Christ is renewing his life in us. I frequently observe people coming to Holy Communion at Masses who are deeply devoted to their faith. You can see it in their faces. Sadly, sometimes I observe people who seem to be just going through the motions, 
It's always important to be deeply devoted to the Eucharist and to witness to that to others. You know, there are several ways in which we are called to be in communion as we receive communion. First of all, the Eucharist draws us into a personal communion with Jesus Christ. When we receive Holy Communion, we receive the Lord of Life himself. It is not merely bread nor merely wine we receive. It is Christ totally and fully, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And as we receive the Eucharist, we participate in God's life. Secondly, being in communion as Jesus intended us to be in communion is never just between ourselves and the Lord. In baptism, we are united as members of his body and as such are fundamentally connected with all the sisters and brothers who are likewise baptized in him. St. Paul even uses the analogy of a human body to describe the church. It's one of the reasons why when we celebrate First Communion, it is always within the context of the Mass because we gather together as a body of Christ. To receive Holy Communion is to express our commitment to be in communion with many sisters and brothers who fully share our Catholic faith. It is also a challenge to strive to be an instrument of a communion with those who do not share our faith. And thirdly, our communion is also with the Church of all time. When we receive Holy Communion, we are making a profession of faith. We are affirming that we accept the teachings of the church and will try to follow them. We don't always do this perfectly, but that's the commitment we are making. We are affirming that we accept the teachings of the church and will try to follow them. These beliefs have been handed on to us through the sacred scriptures and 2,000 plus years of sacred tradition, the apostolic tradition of the church, of the church that Christ founded on the apostles. Candidates, I soon will anoint you with the sacred chrism and the sacrament of confirmation, and then invite you to receive the Eucharist for the first time. Remember, this is not ordinary oil, but holy oil that symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And remember, this is not ordinary bread, but the bread of life, Christ himself. You are being sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit of Jesus with this holy oil and are being invited to receive the body of Christ under the form of bread. These sacraments celebrate not only the close communion we have with the Lord, but even so more so the close communion the Lord desires to have with us. would invite our candidates to stand. Before you receive the Spirit, I ask you now to renew the promises of baptism that you were that you once made are more likely that your parents and godparents made for you in union with the church. And so like we practice down in the other room, as I ask you the question, I, I seek your, your positive response. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, 
just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. And finally, do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Living streams. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again in eternal life and baptism, and that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through this anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God.
with the candidates please stand. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. to the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Natalie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Stephen, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in, in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. For God's holy church, may we grow in our awareness that Christ is in us and see the hand of God in the people, the events in our lives, and the created world around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may God dissolve the hatred of human hearts, free the earth from nuclear weapons and disease, and establish a season of peace throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, may all who are called to serve the church in this way Follow the Good Shepherd with joy and receive our loving support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating the sacraments of confirmation and First Communion this morning, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit and lead others to Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Diocesan Synod on Family, May we answer the call to build up the body of Christ, the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may we strive to follow Jesus with fidelity by keeping our baptismal promises and living as the children of light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick. May the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Vern Boyer, Paul Lacey, Daryl Ann Jorgensen, and Nick Gomez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Matt Cole. May they experience the fullness of life in Christ and live in God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors, the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our preparation song is We Belong to You. we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, in the Lord. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore now and for ages unending, and with all the host of angels, we sing to you our, with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in. in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who were called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Our communion song is Bread of Life.
Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. Now, I know that uh, a number of people would have gifts for your candidates if you happen to have them here. I'll ask a blessing upon these religious items to be used as gifts at this Mass. So, for all of those who are holding gifts for your candidates, may God's blessing be upon these items, and that those who use them and wear them uh, will know your blessing in their lives. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Steve, do you have an yeah, announcement? Yeah, a couple of announcements. Um, special thanks to Bishop Warfeld for the gift of his presence to celebrate confirmation with us. It's great that he's here, and we're grateful for your presence and leadership. Special thanks to Joyce Hollowell. This was a tough year during this whole pandemic, and she did a great job getting everything coordinated. Special thanks to her, as well as the catechists, and all of you parents, grandparents, formation of the children, and no one more so than the parents, and we got you more involved this year, and that was a blessing. Uh, that's the silver lining of the cloud, so thank you for your, for your support of your children during this process as well. And, um, and pictures will take place immediately um, at the conclusion of Mass in the groupings of classes. Yeah, and I just ask if, uh, if we could make sure that we do the f photographs in a timely manner, because I have confirmation of First Communion at St. Pius X right after this, so I'll need to scoot over there. The Lord be with you. And with you. By your heads for the blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, Bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and feast glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing, rise up with him. <coughs> 